So hello everyone. We are slowly making our way back from our tea break. Thank you all. And to everyone online at the Kix EMAP community, welcome back. Uh, we had some tea and coffee, so we're just getting everyone back into the room before we kick off. I would just like to remind everyone, I said it maybe too quickly this morning, but if you look at your tables, you have two things. You've got the Wi-Fi code so that you can access uh, internet, but then there's a second piece of paper there with a QR code. Please feel free to scan that QR code with your phone, and then you can join us at the DHIS2 for Education um, and Ministry of Education WhatsApp group in case there's any announcements um, for sharing some links and some for logistics. So please feel free to, to join there uh, so that you can share with us any questions that you might have. Wonderful. So, as we have come back from tea, we're moving into a new phase of the agenda. We've heard many, many good discussions and speeches um, from experts from across the world. We also want to make sure that today's conference, before we jump into day two, really shows us the power of numerical data, of aggregate data. So we think about our statistical yearbooks. This is one of the most important documents and products that are produced in the education sector when it comes to data management and information and planning and budgeting. But historically, it's been maybe not so timely. Historically, it's maybe not been so user-friendly. Um, we are sending, we are asking our, our schools and our hardworking head teachers, our districts, our zonals, our divisions, we are sending all that information up to the national level but there's no feedback coming down to frontline users where we need to make decisions on a, on a daily basis. So for this section of the academy, uh, of the conference, we really want to take that moment to see how can we leverage annual school census data? Can it be more than just a big, thick uh, statistical yearbook with lots and lots of tables without uh, much contextualization? And can we make sure to break down the pieces of information to give it to those who matter when it matters. So I would like you to welcome me. Okay. I would like you to welcome uh, me in inviting Mrs. Nelsiwe Dlamini. She's the acting EMIS manager from the Kingdom of Eswatini. She's been on the panel earlier with us. But today she's going to come and talk to us about leveraging annual school census data in the Kingdom. Uh, for improved collection, for feedback, use, and for dissemination. And that's keywords, use and dissemination. So, Mrs. Nelly uh, Nelsiwe, please join us uh, at the front. Uh, thank you so much. Good, good afternoon. I think it's afternoon now. And good morning to whoever is morning online. Um, Nelsi Wellamini from the Kingdom of Eswatini. Uh, for those who don't know where that is, just look at your map and look down south in the southern African parts. And then there's a tiny, tiny kingdom in between South Africa and Mozambique. That is where we are, we are from. Um, okay, thank you. So we, my presentation will be focusing on aggregate education census, which is mostly done at school level. But um, for the past so many years, not past, because even now it's still like that, our education management information system has been collecting information from schools. And it, that information has been mostly driven by um, UN, uh, agendas from education for all to Millennium Development Goals, now we're at Sustainable Development Goals. So you'll find that our questionnaires or indicators, they mostly respond to this, uh, those agendas. And for us in Africa, in the southern part, we also have the SADAC that we have to report to. And also we have the uh, Africa Union 2063 agenda that, that we report to. So our questionnaires are mostly based on that, but not only that, we also have our um, ministry sector analysis uh, where we monitor our multi-year action plan, 
whereby we also look at what education is seeking to achieve and how to respond to that to cabinet and everyone that is involved in the country uh, in education sector. So we have done, uh, our EMI started in 2004, and we've been on this journey of DHIS 2 since we were the latest babies, I hope. Uh, uh, we've been in this journey since 2021, and right now, our main focus is that ensuring that we are web-based, schools can access the system and also respond on time. Uh, so, yeah, we're fairly young, but we're, we're making progress here and there. Uh, uh, we did that in 2021 with the support of University of Oslo, and here's Uganda, and of late we've been doing also collaboration with the uh, his Mozambique on the individual information data. So what have we done so far in 2024? Um, after 2021, we piloted the system in our schools. And after the pilot, there was an evaluation on what we've done and which informed the rollout. We have rolled out DHIS2 in all the schools in the country. Um, in last year, in, um, in December, we had the HISP Uganda team coming to do training on data quality as assessment. There was one speaker, uh, I don't want to mispronounce names or anything, you'll for me, forgive me for that, who spoke on reliability and validity of the data and also on timely data. So after the data quality assurance training, we realize that there is more that we have to, to be, that we have to do as a country. Because over the years, we've been focusing on the national reporting structure, which was top to bottom. And with DHIS2, we're trying to move away from that and say we're trying to do the bottom up um, way, whereby schools are informed uh, regions are informed and also nationally it, we are well informed of what, it, of what is happening on our education sector. So from that meeting we had uh, the technical, we established a technical team which involved regional education officers and we also involved them in our training plan for schools. And uh, we rolled out that uh, last year whereby we trained um, about 930 teachers, which is 96% uh, of the coverage. So head teachers or principals were requested to nominate a focal teacher who would be responding and working with the MS unit. Uh, they did that. We trained them over a period of, of four weeks. Uh, it was a two-day training, taking them through the forms because we normally forget that schools, they need capacity to understand what MS is and their responsibilities. And another thing, we forget that the tools that are coming from schools, they need to understand who, are, who is using and who is demanding that information from them and for what, paper, and for what purposes. So the training included that our our what MS is as a country, and then it involved going through the paper, the paper based uh, questionnaires to say that if we're looking at enrollment, what do we mean by enrollment? If we're calculating an indicator, how are we calculating that indicator? And if we are responding and sharing that information, who are we sharing that information for? So we covered that with the 930 teachers, which was a success. And then looking at the other questions or data elements that were there, that were not properly understood by the schools. We then went back, because they had already updated their 22 and 23 annual education census data. We then work, went back to say, can we check the valid, validity and reliability of that data? If from their training you have understood a question in a different way from how you responded to it, can we correct that and fix that? So that is what we do last year, December, such that we had a, an updated version for 2023 and 2022 annual education census. And then we are saying the schools are supposed to update and load, and load their data 
and then we get it nationally. So they are currently updating their annual education census form for 2024. So far, the response rate is above 50%, which we are grateful for. Okay. Data verification. We can't collect information without verifying the sources. And in as much as we went through the training with the, with the schools, we still need to verify it at our regional level. We, we are saying we're not going to report something nationally that hasn't been ver verified at regional level. So we worked with the regional education officers to say, can you check, can you look on how your schools under your region are doing. Look at the trends that they've been submitting. If you are looking at trends, you are looking, uh, we, we started in 2014. So you have to look for trends from 2014 to recent to see if there were any changes. You should be able to answer or debate or challenge, or challenge those changes. And if it's changes that are valid, then all well and good, your data is, va is valid and you can say it's verified. So uh, on top of that, we, vi we are doing what we say spot checks using an, uh, an assessment tool that, was, that is borrowed from health uh, to say if this information on the website or on the platform is saying that you have 100 learners and we visit the schools and we check that really is it 100 learners in that particular school. So we've been doing that, and most of the, uh, the data we found in the nine schools, the discrepancy was between 1%, and that was explainable that you have other learners enrolling in the middle of the year, yet the reporting year for us is March, it's end of March, so uh, yeah. So on data use, I think we've been fortunate enough in our country that we have the media exposure from the Ministry of Finance uh, supporting the, 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 the shift from paper-based to web-based. And also the presentations that we're doing, we're also saying we don't want SMEs to present alone. Can we have other producers of the of data come into place, let us present together on what is happening on the education sector as a country. At school level, we're encouraging focal teachers that can you explain to the other school class teachers or if any school committee that is in place of the importance of the data and the responding to it, why it's important. And then at regional level, level, we have the WhatsApp group where we share updates on what is happening to their schools and also asking for them to validate the data that is coming in, such that uh, we are looking at data coming in against the policies that are there. Some of the policies that I can mention is on reputation. Reputation for our country at primary level was saying that it should be automatic progression or at least 5% uh, repeating. But then that is a policy, that is a circular that is in place. But then when you see your region going far and beyond that 5%, as a regional head, you are supposed to go and investigate and also share what the policy says and address that issue. So that is how we're working with the regional level to improve on policy, on, on implementation of policies. And also again, for planning and budgeting, we are saying that uh, can we do away with this budgeting because we've been budgeting for so long and because um, the UN says uh, education is supposed to get 15%. How you distribute that 15% should be informed by the information that you have in place and then address those issues accordingly. So what are the challenges we have? We have lots of challenges, uh, first and foremost, we're still, like I mentioned, that we're still new in, 
into this DHIS platform. So we need standard operating procedures to be in place for everyone involved, from school level to national level. If you are going to be using data, if you are going to be sharing, if you are going to be looking at the security of data. Security of data has been mentioned here several times by former speakers. Uh, if you are looking at um, reliability and validity, they need to be standard operating procedures in place to look into that. And then we need to harmonize our information. Uh, the Minister of State was saying that data for higher education is here and there. But then again, when we're reporting on the education sector, we need to be one and present a one voice. So we need those linkages to be, and those indicators to be harmonized. Either it's coming from Ministry of Health in terms of school health, it's coming from uh, household surveys, it needs to be harmonized such that we speak the same language and there is no discrepancy in uh, the information that we share globally and locally. Uh, another problem for us is human resource. When we are saying we're going digital and then we're going full scale digital, it means that our people who are working in the MS, they should be trained. So there's need for further training to understand the procedures that are in place and also explore other ways to do it better. And of course, what can we do without any monetary or any re other resources that are there? Uh, health has been fortunate enough. They do get donors and they could do get support. I was asking one of uh, a colleague of mine in the Ministry of Health, and uh, she was like, you know what, education is not getting so much support because health is dealing with immediate repercussions, if I call it that. Like, if you are going to be in health and you are saying you are administering um, some injection or whatever, the chances of you failing will be easily visible there and there. Is it that the person dies because you gave them the wrong dosage or they, something else happens? So for us, because the effect of not applying what is just and should be uh, applied is felt like 12 years later after a learner has completed that education. So I think that is another thing that we should be looking into as education, that in as much as the, um, the programs that we're developing, we're looking at them at this point of view, but we should think about the future, what implication does it have? And then the opportunities that we have, like I mentioned that if we're going to be reporting on data, it should be not Emmy saying that how many learners are there, but the program people who are implementing program at school level, they should be the one writing and explaining the figure. If it's 94% of learners enrolled, where are the 6%? What programs are you implementing to do this? Uh, those are the opportunities that we are looking into, exploring the network of data users and also responding uh, accordingly. And also we need to disseminate. We can't be calling schools to be busy pushing information upwards. They should be using that information again to inform their school level uh, planning. And we need to orient. We have realized that we need to orient a, a lot of stakeholders to say, this is the platform. These are the dashboards. I'm sure they expect to be coming and showing us dashboards in the next three days. And we want to all our stakeholders to be able to just tap into the platform and see where their areas are and of interest are and how that is going. And then, yeah, disseminate with everyone. The linkages should be there from household surveys to health to any other ministry that is offering education in the country. Uh, that is it. Thank you so much.